All right, everybody, it is time to talk about field properties. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to looking at the customers table. We're going to double click on it. If I right click on tables, remember, I can go to design view. And since we want to look at field properties, we you do want to be in design view. That is where the properties are shown for tables. And you'll notice that right away this customer ID field is highlighted. So the specific field properties down here are specific to the customer ID field. If we left click down here, now we have highlighted company name and the field properties are specific for that field. And there we go. You'll notice that the field size is different uh, for a lot of these and in fact, for our customer ID field, the field size is five. And you'll actually, this is really useful. If you actually click, so we're right now, we, we're on customer ID. And if I click on field size, you'll notice that on the right side here, you actually get some information and it tells you exactly what that property controls. So it says it's the maximum number of characters you can enter in the field. The largest maximum you can set is 255. So since the field size is only five for customer ID, we can actually go back to the data sheet view and let me try to create a new record. And I should not be able to create a new one with six and it doesn't let me. I'm now at five and it won't let me put in a six character. So perfect. That means it is working. So we'll go back. So that's awesome. And really field size is not something that you have to worry about too much these days in terms of restricting the field size. And this is because computers have gotten so much better, so much more powerful, so much more efficient, a lot more memory. And this used to be a lot more important when computers didn't have a lot of memory and they really couldn't handle uh, a lot of memory. Now they can. So it's really something you don't have to worry about too much. So next we're going to talk about the format field property and there's two kinds of formats that you have to know about. The first one are called predefined formats and let's say we select here company name, the field name company name. We know that its data type is short text. If it has a predefined format, it's going to be, if you click on format, it's going to be here under the drop down menu. So short text don't have any predefined formats so that's why there is none here but i'll show you just for fun here i'll add date here and i'm going to use the data type of course date slash time and dates do have a predefined formats so they're right here so you see as soon as i click on format i can pick how I want to format my date. They have something called a general date, long date, medium, short, long time, medium time, and short time. So that's really cool. So we can just get rid of that, uh, right click on it and uh, delete row. So let's go back to company name. We'll select company name, um, but actually I want you to go back to the data sheet view. We're gonna save um, and notice the company name right now Aside from, of course, the first letter, everything is lowercase. If we want to make everything uppercase, we can do that very easily. If we go back to design view, one of the custom formats for short text is this. It's like the greater uh, than sign. So when we try to go back, it's going to ask us to save because we have applied a custom format. We try to go back to data sheet view, ask it, we want to save. And look what's happened now. Notice how company name everything is now in the company name field is upper case. And it also means that if we want to apply or add a new record, even if we put it in lowercase letters, it's going to naturally, once we leave the field, it's going to make it uppercase. So if you want to enforce those kinds of formats, you can uh, do that though. There's really not many ones that I use for the short uh, text field. And finally, for this lecture, let me talk about input masks. 
So we'll go ahead and select the phone field, which is a short text uh, data type. And if I click into input mask, remember you get a little information on the side. It tells you that it's a pattern for all the data to be entered in this field. An input mask is a lot like a format. You'll notice these three dots here. You can uh, left click on that and it's going to open up. And input masks are really useful for things like phone numbers, postal codes, social insurance number. It's essentially a, a format or a certain pattern that you can use uh, for these uh, types of fields. So it can be uh, useful. So I'll just go ahead and uh, go next. And this is just an input mask wizard. So it gets you through it. Uh, so it's really, really easy. And this is the pattern of your phone number in this case. The 999 means that the area code is optional. If you don't want to make the area code optional and you want to enforce people to put in the area code, what you do is simply change this to 000. And now, whenever somebody tries to enter in a phone number, they have to include uh, the area code. If you don't want to do that, and you want to allow somebody to just hit the space space bar and uh, bypass and just give you the seven digits here, you can just put 999 in here. In any case, you can go to next. And then the last thing it asks you is, how do you want to store the data? Do you want it with the symbols or without the symbols? So it's up to you. Let's say here, uh, I just select symbols, finish. And you will see down here uh, that the input mask uh, is now uh, applied and you're just gonna wanna go ahead uh, and save it. So that is it for this one. We're gonna look at more field properties in the upcoming videos.